Welcome to this guitar family and today I'm going to talk to you about my final master thesis presentation. If you are new in this channel please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content of classical guitar, technique, musical tips, practice sessions, concerts, traveling. So sorry for the looks but this Two o'clock in the night. I just finished finally the presentation and the work and the, and the script for tomorrow. And I've been working on that now already like many many days, <laughs> complete days because I did such a massive work and I invested so much that I really wanted to make it nice. So I'm um, hopeful they will like it and that the jury will also enjoy that and even more that they will find it interesting to listen to. And because the fact that you have to play also a little bit during the presentation, there is not a whole lot of things that I can add because it's just 20 minutes. But let's try to make the most out of these 20 minutes. I'll see you tomorrow morning for the presentation uh, in the conservatory. Hello and welcome. Today we are already, at, maybe you can recognize these rooms, <laughs> these little cabin rooms from the conservatory where I study, which is Lucas School of Art in Leuven, Belgium. And if I have to say something about this conservatory, I really appreciate that there's always rooms to practice. Like, no matter which time you arrive, there's always a place to practice, which that's really nice. So I don't have a lot of time now, I would like to just pass a little bit through my script, so I refresh everything, because two less hours of sleep do not help in remembering stuff, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be fine because I rehearse that quite a lot, and I know very clearly the concepts I want to expose, so that should be okay, really. So I'll see you in a bit. I don't know if I mentioned that, but the thesis I'm doing and the topic is the Chagona and how to build up an interpretation from the rhetorical content. So it really fascinates me this topic and I'll explain later what this, uh, this is about because now I really have to go, so wish me luck. So as you saw, today was my very final presentation, the master thesis presentation. I could not record because it was pretty serious and I didn't want to be there like, hey, hey, hello, I go with the camera, you know, like, and I was also, you know, focused on the thing. So sorry about that. It's just, um, I don't think it would have been really appropriate to, to vlog it. <laughs> Finally, I have a copy here for me of my baby. My God, it just... This, it's uh, how many pages was it? I forgot. Around 160 pages. It took me nearly two years to make. I mean, not really like two years, like every single day working on that. But yeah, two years learning about this topic, which is rhetoric on Baroque music and specifically applied to, to the Chacona of Bach. For those who do not know, I'm doing the master um, degree while well, I'm finishing now. And part of the master studies is the thesis. A thesis which you have to do on a subject that of your choice. I always wanted to practice the Chacona, that was a dream of mine. But it's such a dense piece that that I just didn't want just to play it, just the notes, you know, and do my best on it, but I really wanted to understand this music. And um, yeah, that was for me the perfect excuse to do that. And I was so lucky to get uh, as a mentor for this work a Baroque specialist, uh, Bart Spanhove, which from here I send you a huge huge thank you i mean this work is so good because of his uh, guidance really uh, classical musicians will know that the chacona is the fifth and last movement of the second partita for solo violin it is nearly the half of the entire partita which being one of the movements it's quite uh, massive in terms of minutes it's about uh, between 12 a rather fast one to 15 a uh, slowish one but it's a, it's a long piece. If you are interested to know the whole background story, I recommend you that you read the biography of uh, Christoph Wolf, um, the learned musician. Here, not only you know about Bach, you will not only discover his biography details, but also know this composer better as a genius he was and how many topics and subjects he was really good at and how amazing he really was. It is really worth uh, reading, it's very inspirational, the book. You totally see like Bach's music in different eyes. So for musicians and non-musicians, I think it's a very good, nice read. So why did I decide to, to approach the Chacona through the rhetoric? That's a very easy answer, actually. It sounds complicated, but rhetoric is just, is the way they used to communicate that involves, let's say, not only speech, but also formulas, uh, body language, 
Rhetoric is the means that I have to understand what is behind the music or try to have a clearer picture of what was really meant with certain formulas, with certain things that he composed. So the, the process in my thesis was divided in two big parts. Um, there is the part of the of rhetoric which belongs to the composer, which is a part of composing the piece and why he composed it this way, why he chooses those tools, uh, why this tonality, why he these voices, why this instrument, why why everything, just question everything. The second part is a part of how to perform that, the delivery of that finished idea. In this case, the Chacona. As a as a player, being that it's someone who lived so many years ago, who had a different cultural background, who had a different language, who had a different style of composing and different type of music around him. I think we need first to approach this kind of music as what we can get to know, as much as good as and deep that we can get to know it. So the whole point behind this thesis is to understand which type of formulations were um, common and natural and used in the Baroque time to express certain things. And that is what we call rhetorical figures. There was a huge lot of analysis but not analysis in harmony, analysis in um, form. It was a much deeper analysis of, of which rhetorical figures we can find where and how were they understood, how were they performed and what they meant. And within, within all this, um, I started to build my thesis. So, let's say a big part of it is this uh, analysis, finding the things, understanding which musical rhetorics do what. For every rhetorical figuration that I put in this uh, thesis, which are about 20, um, I also add the same rhetorical figuration used by another composer um, in the same way, just to prove that that is not just an invention of uh, or my own interpretation on what Bach is doing, but that it was really a way, let's say, it was like a way of saying on that time, but in musical terms. And after that, after all this analysis, understanding, researching, finding, showing and describing how these uh, rhetorical figures work, the second part of, the, of this thesis is how to translate that on guitar because it's original for violin, this piece. And which we enter in terms of, should I go for a transcription? Should I go for an arrangement? For those who do not know, the difference between arrangement and transcription is that an arrangement is a reconceptualization of a previous composed work. So an arrangement, it can have a different harmonization, melodic phrasing, orchestration, development, or even the formal structure might be changed or altered. The transcription, on the other hand, can be two things either a song that has never been written and you transcribe it down written in paper but it also means to write a piece that was originally intended for a certain instrument to another instrument or a piece that was intended for a group of instruments an ensemble orchestra duo whatever to a single instrument or to another type of ensemble everything that means um, translating one original composition to something else but respecting exactly as it was obviously that implies that you add some little changes to fit it in the new instrumentation. And so the last bit of my work then was to have a guitar transcription out of all this work. And um, I went for a transcription because obviously making an arrangement means to be very, very aware on how you would compose in Bach style because I wanted to stick as much as I could to the, to the original. I mean, one can also make an arrangement in a modern style or in a romantic style just maybe like Muzoni did, Mendelssohn, but as my intention was to understand better the language of Bach, I wanted to stay as close as his uh, music was, yet making a, a guitar score that was playable and nice sounding for a guitar. So that's what it is. I'm really happy. I'm really happy because um, I do think music differently now. Before I used to be concerned, oh, maybe I can play this fingering or maybe have many other multiple ideas of fingerings maybe taking uh, into account the color, maybe taking into account the type of sound, the voices, the continuity on the voicing or, or the color that you have in a certain passage. But now somehow I think I'm, I'm starting to think some steps further to that, which is great, but it's also annoying because it takes uh, much more brain power when you practice to really decide something, because I must really be convinced of that idea, that it either makes sense um, in a technical way, in a musical way, and in a meaningful emotional way as well. But I guess that's what music is about, right? Um, music is about just bringing some emotion into sounds and, and give a special moment to people with that. And uh, that's worth everything. So if many of you comment 
that you would like to know more about this topic one day i'll make a video um, showing you many more details with the score practical and, and real situations where you find these kind of rhetorical figures how to play them which kind of techniques in guitar you can use for that and because that you also have to think a little bit outside the box to to try to figure out how to reproduce all these violin bows and so if you're interested in that just let me know i'll read always the comments i try to answer if possible all of them so feel free to just give me your, your feedback or let me know how was your experience if you did a master thesis as well in the conservatory how was it and which kind of topics you guys actually did for your uh, master studies and i'm interested in that to see what uh, other people research on i hope you find this video interesting and that you learned something about the topic and stay tuned because i'll be uploading some new vlogs about some concerts i did recently so and it was a really really nice experience just i can't wait to show you that and yeah stay tuned because this summer we're gonna come more concerts and more events and more things so subscribe to this channel if you would like to be part of all this and i'll see you in the next vlog At the end of the manuscript, this uh, Bach and Barbara is like just so nice. <laughs> <laughs>